Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, don't worry, you haven't drunk too much or smoked too much of those Jamaican woodbines. You are not seeing double. Now, on the left here, we have the Baofeng BF UV32, which is an analog radio that I featured in a video last week. And on the right, well, that's a dual band analog and digital transceiver called the DM32 UV. Now, the BF UV32 that I previously reviewed came out as a bit of a disappointment due to its rubbish airband AMD modulation and its high spurious emissions on the VHF2 meter band. However, the DM32 UV, the radio on the right here, not only has superb spurious emissions, or should I say lack of, it also receives airband quite nicely too. Of course, later in the video, I will demonstrate these to you. Now the DM32 comes with the same accessories as the UV32 did. So if you saw that video, well, they're exactly the same. Even the battery is the same, which was a 7.4 volt battery, not an 8.4 volt battery, like I said in the last video. Now comparing the back of these radios, we can see the UV32 shows it supports three bands. Well, three bands if you live in the US, that is, which is probably why the filtering on the VHF was so rubbish. Not because of the US support, but because it supported more than two bands. Now on the right, the DM32, you can see it supports just two bands, from 136 to 174 megahertz, and then 400 to 480 megahertz. Now the price of the DM32 UV is only $60, and that's if you order it from Banggood using the coupon code I put in the video description below. So for a dual band handheld radio that's clean and does analog and digital, well, that's a pretty fair price. Now power output on the DM32 UV is spec to eight watts. And again, I will test that later in the video. Now, as you can see, the radios look identical. And it's not until you turn the radios on that you can see the differences on the screen. Now the hardware is completely different inside between the two. So you cannot just dump the firmware from the DM32 onto the UV32 and then expect to have a great radio. If you have been watching my videos, you would have noticed how deflated I get when we test these cheap Chinese born radios. And this is the first Baofeng that I've tested in a very long time that actually does what it says on the tin. Now there is one issue or potential issue which may or may not bother you. And that's the digital contact capacity. Now with over 270,000 worldwide DMR IDs issued, this radio can only store 50,000 of them meaning you cannot load the entire callsign ID database into this radio. Now, if you do not know what I'm talking about, then it's just a database of DMR IDs that are linked to a user's callsign and location, meaning it will show on the screen when that person is talking. However, though, this radio does support talker alias, meaning that when enabled, and if the person transmitted is sending their talker alias, then you do not need to have a radio ID database stored in the radio. Now, one of the features this radio has is the ability to record QSOs. And I'm sure I've seen on some other radios where the audio recording feature has been removed to make more space to store digital contacts. Now, maybe Baofeng might perform this change in the future. Who knows? Now, as with the UV32, this DM32 has its speaker on the rear, which is actually a strange place to have it. But it does actually sound really good if that's any substitution. Charlie Oscar 2. Yankee Tango, do you copy Zulu Sierra 6 Lima Foxtrot, over? The DM32 also has built-in GPS, which can be used for APRS over DMR. I could not see a way to enable an analog APRS beacon, only APRS via DMR. But with the amount of DMR repeaters up and online around the world, I guess it doesn't really matter if you want to track your location over APRS. And the menu system is actually not bad. It pretty much allows you to do everything on the radio without needing a computer. You can create channels, groups and zones, plus send SMS messages via DMR. Now the screen is also fully customizable in terms of color for each line on the display, so you can personalize it to your liking. You can also disable dual watch so that only one VFO or memory bank is shown on the screen. Now, Dual Watch does allow two VFOs, but it's not able to receive on both at the same time. Of course, with any radio like this, you will get a programming application. And to be fair, it's not the most complicated that I've seen, especially when it comes to DMR. OK, so let's test the audio transmit quality using FM. This is MZ 
zero DQW testing the audio on the Baofeng DM32 on analog. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing the audio on the DM32 from Baofeng. Dual band analog and digital DMR handheld transceiver. M0 DQW over. Now let's see what it's like to receive on the air band using AM demodulation. And remember the UV32, it was terrible at doing this. But is the DM32 any better? Let's take a listen. All right, heading 270, speed 250. Reduce minimum clean speed. Hold big in minute, uh, five minutes, area one to one. Right, back to Ockham, leave Ockham heading 270 degrees. You've been for it, three degrees. Well, well, airband with my ears sounds pretty darn good. Bayafeng, you have impressed me here so far. Now, the tests are not over, so this could still fail. But let's move on to power testing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the power output is rated at 8 watts, but we all know they never achieve specs. So let's first test low power on 2 meters at 145 megahertz. Now, here we see an output power of around 1 watt on low power and then just under four watts on medium power. Now, if we switch it up to high power, we see an output of around 6.5 watts. Now, up on 70 centimeters at 435 megahertz and on low power, we see an output of just above one watt. On medium power, we see an output just above four watts. And then on high power, we see an output of around 6.5 watts. So not far off the spec, and we also have to take into consideration any loss in the patch cables used and the calibration accuracy of the cheap power meter that I'm using here. Of course, the difference between 6.5 and 8 watts on the receiving end, well, that's going to be negligible anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So lastly then, let's take a look at the spurious emissions. Now on the UV32, I reviewed a couple of videos back. Transmissions on the two meter band at around 145 megahertz showed a rather large second harmonic. Well, on this DM32, there's no visible second harmonics. And between the peak of the fundamental and the noise floor, well, that's a good 55 dB. Now, surprisingly, we see similar results on the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz. Again, no visible second harmonic, and the difference between the fundamental peak and the noise floor is again around 55 dB. So Baofeng has finally made a dual band analog and digital handheld radio that outputs more than five watts, demodulates AM airband almost perfectly, and has in spec spurious emissions. Plus the price of this radio is only $60. Okay, so this isn't the smallest of radios, it's still quite a large radio to hold in the hand and not exactly pocket friendly. The Radio Oddity GD168 is still my favourite analogue and DMR handheld radio due to its size, but that radio costs over $250. So, is this Baofeng their next big radio? Let me know if you own one of these radios and how you get on with it. From the tests I've performed in this video, I believe it's actually a winner. Even receiving tests with far off repeaters seem to work well with the included antenna. It also appeared to handle strong adjacent stations quite well. So maybe Bayerfing have finally mastered the art of designing and making RF band filters. Anyway guys, big thanks out to my patrons and YouTube members, as well as all of you subscribers and people that watch my video. It is highly appreciated. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.